Hello everybody, Bob Murphy here. I wanted to take some time today to respond to the recent video put up by Robert Reich. I'm sure many of you have seen it. It's about two and a half minutes long in his view as to what's wrong with the economy. Now Reich had a very clever presentation, had a lot of quick animation going on. And basically his points were that rich people have gotten a lot richer since 1980 to the detriment of the lower income groups. And they use this increased wealth to bribe politicians, to give them big, huge tax cuts. Therefore, the government was starved for revenue, ran up huge budget deficits because of that, had to cut vital social service spending, and basically the middle class now is up a creek because they don't have these important government services because rich people took all the money. And that's why now the middle class can't afford to spend enough money to keep the economy going. Now, if you think I'm setting up a caricature or a straw man, I encourage you, please, Watch Reich's video and you'll see that's exactly what his theory was. So very quickly, I just want to put out a video to respond to these points and to sort of give an alternative explanation. Okay, so first of all, let's just set the record straight as to what the statistics are for government spending receipts and so forth since 1980. Now, I don't have the funding at my disposal that Robert Reich does, but I do have the ability to whip up some quick graphs. Okay, so here's the first one. This is from the Federal Reserve's website. And what this shows is the percentage of the GDP that federal tax re receipts have been since 1960. So in his video, Reich claimed that we have right now, uh, tax receipts are the lowest share of the economy that they've been in 60 years, he said. And that is true. Okay, you can see down here, this, this low point here, this is bottomed out. And yeah, that goes going back, I mean, it actually did dip down roughly to this level back in the 1970s at some point, but we'll give Reich the benefit of the doubt. And so yeah, basically, right now, tax receipts as a share of GDP are at pretty low levels going back decades. But is it because Ronald Reagan cut tax rates on the super rich? Well, no. You can see in this chart that here's 1980. You could see that, okay, yeah, tax revenues came down, but that's because there was a bad recession. Then they went back up, came down again in the late and then during the 90s they went up. You could say, oh, it's because of Bill Clinton, fair enough, what have you. Came way down because of the recession, started going back up. And then they plummeted under Barack Obama. Okay, so if you're going to say who's to blame for the fact that we have right now historically low tax receipts as a percentage of the economy, if you had to pick a president, you wouldn't blame it on Ronald Reagan because, look, during the 80s, they were comparable to where they were during the 70s, all right? So clearly, uh, Reich gives you the idea that they started out up here and then there was a steady downward trend, and that's clearly not what's happening. Okay, what about Reich's claim that the uh, tax giveaways to the super rich starved the government for revenue, and that's why the government had no choice but to run huge budget deficits and now it's cutting uh, important social spending. Well, let's look at a different chart. All right. On this chart, again, from the Federal Reserve website, what I'm showing you is federal expenditures in absolute dollar terms. That's the black line. And the pink line is showing you tax receipts in absolute dollars. Not, not adjusted for inflation. All right? And I started this one in 1970, just so you could see the trend before the evil 1980s kicked in. And look, here's the pink line. It's going up during the 70s, dips, it flattens out during the bad recessions in the early 80s, and then it keeps going up during the 80s. And then it continues to go up, and it doesn't really significantly drop until the recession in the early 2000s. Zooms way back up again, and then plummets in our most recent uh, financial crash, okay? In particular, from 1980 to 1990, the absolute dollar tax receipts went from 518 billion to over $1 trillion, okay? So federal tax revenue more than doubled during the 1980s, all right? So that should give you some pause if your explanation for why we have big budget deficits is that the government gave all the money back to rich people and couldn't spend anything. So why did we have huge budget deficits? And we certainly did. They accelerated under Ronald Reagan. There's no doubt about that. Well, it's because this black line grew even faster. And you can see here, 
zooming way up in the last few years. So just let me ask you, this black line is showing federal government expenditures. Does it look like there have been really sharp cutbacks in federal government spending? No. Now, if you adjusted for state and local spending, it wouldn't be as severe an increase. That's true. But it's certainly not the case that, oh, man, the government just doesn't have any money because they gave it all to these rich people. That's not true. Let me point out one other statistic just to rebut Reich's worldview. So this comes, this I just had this handy, this comes from the 1995 Dallas Fed's annual report. The point here is when people quote distribution of income statistics, it often gives you the impression that the same people are stuck in, say, the bottom 20%. So people will quote statistics saying how much income went to the top 10%, how much income over a certain period went to this percentage, and it makes it look like if you were poor in 1979, then, well, shucks, you were still poor in 1990 because Ronald Reagan gave all the money to rich people. And that's very misleading, okay? So let me just give you one specific example. In the interest of brevity here, I'll just give you one. So this Dallas Fed report shows that if you looked at people who were in the bottom 20% of income in the year 1975, and then you looked at those same people in the year 1991, fully 29% of them at that point were now in the top 20%, okay? So what we're getting at here is the income mobility over time. So again, the people in 1975 who would have been at that point, that snapshot would have been in the bottom 20%. That same group of individuals in the year 1991 had all moved up to, or 29% of them had moved up to being now in the top 20% of income earners. Okay, so these statistics that show you what quintile of income got how many of the gains over a certain period, it's very misleading because it makes it sound as if it's the same people and once you get into that certain cast, you're stuck there forever and that's not true, all right? Now, last point I wanna make here, am I defending the system that we have right now in the United States or that has been in place for the last few decades? No, I'm not. It is a horribly corrupt system. There are plenty of filthy, stinking rich people who have their money because they have political influence, okay? But the solution to that is not, as Reich suggests, to give the government even more power, to have the government now have the power to take 70% of your income on the margin if you make above a certain amount. That's not the solution. The way you combat having rich people have a lot of power because they have political pull is to take away the government's power. You're never going to get to a situation where the government has incredible power over people, can take a lot of their money, and then the only way we can survive is if the government gives us some of that money back. You can't have that system in place and then keep it honest by just making sure we vote for the right people. Now, let, let's keep the money out of politics. That, that's what, let's pass some laws keeping the money out of politics. That's the way to keep it honest and uh, above board. That, that's crazy. That will never happen. Politicians, we all know politicians are liars, are scumbags, what have you, right? Nobody is ranking politicians at the height of their list of honest professions, okay? So it's naive to think that the way to solve problems, the way to get social justice is to have the government take even more of our money and then hope they give it to the right people who deserve it. That's crazy. Let rich companies that make bad loans go belly up, okay? That's not what we have in this country right now. There were huge bailouts. All right, and I and plenty of other serious libertarians oppose the bailouts from day one. All right, whereas a lot of people on the so-called progressive wing were okay with that. Right? They didn't object when it mattered. They object maybe after the fact, now that it's a done deal. But at the time when it mattered, plenty of those people were saying, well, yeah, we, we can't just let the whole economy collapse. We need to you know, rescue these major banks. No, the consistent libertarian position has been no special treatment, for big companies, if you make bad decisions and suffer losses, psh, tough luck, you go down. But at the same time, if you're honest and you make money and you're profitable, well then you get to keep it, okay? We don't have the right to take your money because we think we're gonna spend it on something more useful than what you had in mind for it. All right, well, let's keep the video short and I'll end there. Thanks everybody for watching.